We're in Colorado, so I've seen a couple now that have been on these lists that are like over a million, over two million. Should we stay away from ones that are that expensive? Because would it be harder to do subject two and stuff on those kind of deals? It's probably easier to do subject two. Uh, you, your exit strategy though is very limited. Okay. Uh, you have to remember in the economy, when the economy is going down and like it or not, the economy is going down. There's just less buyers of a $2 million house than there were, you know, six months ago. And so your pool of potential exit strategy, which would be lease option, or maybe you could do some kind of a seller finance wrap that the people in that pool, all, which was always a small pool to start with are even smaller now. Now, I know what Blair will tell you, you can make more money waiting around in the bigger dollar houses than you can in the smaller dollar houses. You can't make $100,000 on a house that sells for 60, right? But you can sure make $500,000 on a $2 million house. That's relatively easy to do. Okay. If you live here in Los Angeles or San Diego, or maybe San Francisco. But short of that, it's tough. There's very few communities around the country where they are unhooked from the normal gravimetrics of the economy. Okay. And so, you know, my advice uh, is stay away from those unless it's such a good deal that you, I mean, if, if somebody's got a, a, you know, a house they owe a million on, it's clearly worth 2 million, you know, that could be a whole different kind of strategy you want to look at. Okay. So I, I wouldn't throw them away, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time getting them subject to. Because you, you've heard these people on, on this call tonight talk about they're having a hard time getting some of these guys, even even for a $1,200 payment with $3,000 down, they're having a hard time getting them to come see the house. Think about how much harder that would be if the monthly payment's 40000 bucks and I need, oh, by the way, I need 200000 down. Yeah. Yeah, the, both those guys are out to lunch this week, <laughs> the, both your buyers. They're just, they're hard to find. With the fact that you said that the economy is kind of going in a downturn, are we at any risk then when we're doing these deals that like the value of the house could drop on us? It could, but that's why we try and get you built in with some spread to begin with. As long as you've got the, the, the margin uh, on the, the cash flow, you should be fine regardless of what the value of the house does. Because even though, and this is the weird thing that's going to happen, it's happened before, it's going to happen again. When the economy goes down, people lose houses, and then what do they do when they get evicted from the house? They go rent an apartment, they go live in grandma's basement for six months, get their credit repaired, then go get an apartment, or live in a mobile home park, or get a rent a house, or something like that, right? And so um, the market for, the house price market will drop, but the rental market may actually go up, because there's be way more demand for a lower price commodity. Um, you know, in the midst of the depression, the number one deal out there was telling Blair today, mobile home, I had one girl full-time finding mobile home parks and mini storage. The reason I like mini storage in a down economy is because when people lose that house, they get foreclosed out of the house and they gotta move to grandma's basement, they're not getting rid of their stuff, right? They gotta go put it in mini storage. So mini storage, mobile home parks, you know, that's your break the glass plan. But short, until we get to that point, or if we ever get to that point in the economy, I doubt we'll get that far again because the government has a vested interest in keeping the housing economy up. But until we get to that point again, the, the safe haven is rental housing, is houses that have some monthly component payment. That's okay. the, safe, the safe harbor. If it's getting 1500 now, it's gonna get 1600 a year from now. It's not gonna go down to 12. Okay just because they're not building rental houses anymore, right? When's the last time anybody went by a new uh, piece of construction of houses out there, starter homes? Nobody, they just don't do it anymore. You know, it's too risky, there's not enough money in it, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we've got a shortage at the lower end of the housing spectrum and it's becoming more acute on a day by day basis. And that plays into our hands the way we do seller finance because anything that's got some equity in it, um, and has a decent cash flow spread, that's golden. That's just money in the bank. It's not money in the bank today. It's money in the bank over the next 30 years of your life, though. Okay. 
if you want to keep it that long, or rent or lease option it out and get a chunk up front and then make your monthly spread until such time as those people get requalified to go to the bank and get you cashed out.